Hey. I'm Carl the Puck of Pecacorn. Welcome to God Awful Movies Live from Seattle! Please take a moment to silence your cell phones and. If you have a Volvo with the license plate Wool Dash Amiza for real, you did leave your lights on, so go check on that. And now, welcome to the stage, the one, the only, Mo Illusions! Thank you. Thank you so much. Holy shit, there's a lot of you. Wow. Wow, that's a hell of a crowd. Thank you so much for coming out. You may have noticed my limp on the way out. Don't let Eli tell you any different. I did not fall off the stage. (laughs) Because that would imply that I made it all the way up onto the stage before I fell. All right, I know Carl the Pug of Pegacorn already asked you to do a little of the cheering to begin with, but we're going to do it one more time here. So here we go, officially this time. I wanted an honest answer there. It was like, so I stalked you like a bum. Yes. <laughs> Almost gave up. God gave me a sign. No, he didn't. I lied about it. Gaslit myself. <laughs> I love... I- I don't know that religion has ever been described better than I gaslit myself. That was really, that was really good. It was really good, right? Mm-hmm. Where's that T-shirt? Yeah, right? God-awful movie. 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 Welcome to God Awful Movies, live from Seattle! Oh, just too kind. Thank you so much. I guess eventually I do have to stop you. So, all right. Now, this is, of course, the show where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because otherwise y'all motherfuckers would riot. But before we get going, I need you to join me in welcome to the stage my good friend, Heath Enright. All right. Yes. Hello, Antifa. Welcome. Awesome. Yeah, Seattle, just murdering Republicans and riding fixed gear bikes all around. Yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can buy a bike and avocado toast everywhere I went, and a yep. guillotine. Yep. It's great. Fuck yeah. So what you, uh, what you drinking there? Oh, great question. It's Sparkle Donkey tequila. Oh, really? It is Sparkle the best. Sparkle Donkey the tequila for fucking your dad. <laughs> Sparkle Donkey, give it to a child. (laughs) They're not going to keep giving me free stuff if you fuck up your logo. (laughs) It's really good, though. It's notes of tequila. I don't know. (laughs) Ethanol, flutter of ethanol. Yeah, no, of course, of course. nice. And also joining us today, please make some noise for my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Listeners at home, Eli has come out wearing a leprechaun hat, carrying a bucket of potatoes, wearing a hairband. Heath, it is I, your great grandfather. I've run out of potatoes. There's only one word for this, and it's Holocaust. You must call this the only appropriate term I can think of for this moment. Oh, wait, I found one. But I'm not allowed to eat this one, so I'll just die and let my family die as well. Oh, Oh, no. Call this the Holocaust. (laughs) 
Look, here's the thing. I'm not racist anymore, except against the Irish. They're all I have left. And when you're born in upstate New York, it needs to be purged from your system. It's a ketosis situation. I assume you'll be wanting these. (laughs) Actually, yeah. Sparkle donkey. All right. Fuck. I shouldn't have committed to biting the potato. Yeah, right? So, given the fact that I've literally already taken a spill off this stage, I'm picking up these fucking potatoes. I I do like that we actually started on a Holocaust joke this time, though. That's uh, only one direction to go from there, I guess. Oh, there's... Cheese got put up. I got Uh, it. (laughs) Yes. Yes, baby belt. Love these. Thank you. Thank you. Now cheese. The cheese will find him. Please don't feed Heath cheese during the program. <laughs> we need to hang up a fucking This is going to be the Wisconsin show all over again. Yeah, so... There he is. This is our brand new merch. This is from a line we call at a loss. <laughs> It's All tri-blend. right. They're very comfortable. So, it is, it is. It's yeah, give it up for tri blends. Fuck yeah. Those two people. Right? Yikes. Yeah, that was rough. So, <laughs> quick, eat the cheese. Baby Bell. The we cheese have, um, for fucking your dad. <laughs> That's why it's a baby bell. I love it. I've got. I've got, a, I've got a niece here tonight that doesn't really know our shows and isn't getting any of these inside jokes. <laughs> I feel like I have to bump you up on the wheels somewhere or something. All right. So here we go. Tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? Baby Bell cheese. I'm okay, still... so after... <laughs> I'm still eating. I got it. All right. Faster, quick. We want... Tell us your fears. Dilly. <laughs> Too slow. No, Dilly loves Kitty. We watched Dilly loves Kitty. Who else watched it? <laughs> yeah. Wow. I, I like that there was a big boo at the beginning. There was like a yes. rumble yeah. through the audience. Yeah. <laughs> like we invited on fucking Dave Chappelle as a guest. Hey, Dave Chappelle, get up. <laughs> mm. I was so terrified with where that joke yeah, was going. So was I. When, when Did you, you paused, see the terror in yes, my face? Yes, yes, no, I, I, was I like, sensed it. Did you see how wide my eyes are? I was good. I was good. You were. So okay. what was what was Dilly uh, Love Skitty the story of? Uh, it was a story. I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> I watched it twice. I have no fucking. I, I spent the entire double watching of this movie trying to figure out what it's about. Right. Most of my notes are like it's forty five minutes in. Still don't know. <laughs> Never really got there. The, I don't know. The inevitable slow march of death. It's the I mo- don't. It's a, <laughs> this thanks to God. This question is rarely harder than it is today, yes. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you loved Forrest Gump, but you hated its delicate approach to illness and the nuance of its characterization, (laughs) you will love this movie. Okay, so... So I have a super important question here, and this comes from one of our listeners on Facebook. Do you guys think that Dilly Loves Kitty is just the closest a Christian movie title can get to Penis Loves Vagina? Ooh. Right? I mean, because Dilly and Kitty... Thank you. So I don't think Penis Loves Vagina, though, based on the movie. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. No, that's fair. I was like, hey, man, I need you not to work this out on the stage. <laughs> no, you know how, like, when you're about to fuck a woman, you feel nauseous, and you're like, this isn't me, this isn't me! <laughs> Why'd you all get weird and quiet? So, you have to think about your dad, just, like, at the beginning. <laughs> oh, okay, no one here ever came to the thought of their dad. I'm the weirdo. Sparkle so- on. <laughs> They're never going to sponsor us again. No. No. No, but that actually leads to an important question I think we need to address right away, because this is not going to be clear when we start describing this movie, which is, is this movie earnest, or are they just fucking with their Christian audience? I think it is. 
I think it, it's Ernest goes to hospice, Ernest. Yes. <laughs> it's fucking Ernest. It's from the heart. Yeah. That's the plot. of That's what the movie's so, about. There it was. I finally got there. No, there you go. So I, the thing is, is that I was not sure. I watched the movie. The movie's an hour and one minute, right? And, and that's it. So I was not sure the answer to that question until we reached the 53-minute mark, which is where the dance number starts. We'll get to that later. The first dance well, number. Well, yeah, that was, that was quite earnest, let me tell you. Okay, so is there th- anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I'm going to go with best worst really angry old Christian lady. Ooh. Who wants to fuck? Yes. You're talking about the lady in the diner, in right? In the diner, yeah. yeah. So we're going to get to that scene right at the beginning. There's an angry, angry old lady. She's just abusive to the diner staff. And then the main character is like, John 314 says, God is love. And she's like, look at me, sploosh. <laughs> 95, let's do this. Yep. I don't have much time, so we're let's like, get it right away. <laughs> yeah, sorry, yeah. Instead of sploosh. Yeah. yeah, right. Vaginal dryness. <laughs> Anytime I start to make a joke where I say vaginal dryness, I remember that there's at least one spouse in the audience who was just like, okay, we can go see the podcast you listen yeah. to. This. <laughs> and right now their elbow is just digging, just digging. Okay, so I'm not going to tell you who it is, Eli, but I was watching the audience closely and at least two people that I can see from right here when you said vaginal dryness went... <laughs> <laughs> we know our audience. So, we get those audible <laughs> metrics. So. <laughs> so I was going to go with best worst plot backsies, right? So this movie establishes a plot about 37 minutes into its 61 minute runtime. And then like eight minutes later, it's like, man, nah, that's shit. That was shit. Never mind. It's glorious. It's fucking glorious. I'm going to take the easy one. Noah already hinted at it. I'm going to go with best worst. Dancing. Oh, fuck, yeah. Look, I only have a few dreams in this world. Punching Ted Cruz in the face. <laughs> Having sex with that mitten from that children's book about the mitten that gets really big. What? <laughs> and tricking Don't. Heath into a dance circle where everyone goes silent the minute he starts dancing. <laughs> You did that at your wedding. I did do that at my wedding, but I want it again, and I need it. But but this movie is the movie version of that prank, right? There are several moments where you can tell everyone off camera was just like, I can't believe you did it. (laughs) We're going to put this on the internet forever. Yeah, I know. He knows. All right, well, I'll tell you what. We have some... Very enigmatic bullshit to sort through in this review, so we're going to take a quick break to warm our brains up, but we'll be back in a flash with all the stalking that is Dilly Loves Kitty. (laughs) This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. As you know, we are sponsored by BetterHelp. We love BetterHelp. Online therapy. And I figure, what better way to incorporate that than to get down here and talk to the people. So how would you say your parents most failed you? (laughs) Well, I'm glad you asked, because if you're starting to think of giving therapy a try, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Do you think your mom and dad were in love, or they just get married out of convenience? (laughs) Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. therapist tried to kiss me once. Do you think that was bad? I think it was bad, yeah. I agree. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash awful today. Get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash awful. I love you. Uh, I love you too. All right. Stupid resin frazzin actors think they're so cool. Hey, hey there, champ. Why so glum? Oh, hey, Grandpa. Well, it's bad news about that movie I wrote. Uh, Willie Loves Billy or something? Yeah, Dilly Loves Kitty. I wrote it and I sent it to a bunch of actors, but nobody will be in it. Everyone just keeps saying, this movie is so bad, I used it to disinfect crime scenes. Crime scenes. 
Yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it. That's what they'll tell you. Well, so why don't uh, why don't Grandma and I act in your movie? I can be uh, I don't know, some damn body, and 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 she can be Kitty. I don't know, Grandpa. Don't you think people will notice that the love interest is thirty years older than me? I, I, I mean, it works for Richard Gere. <laughs> Hooray! Your movie's fucking terrible. Yeah, it's terrible. It's really bad. And we're back! And I'll tell you what, right away... We know we're in for a treat with this movie because, first of all, no production logos. None! None. No humans were willing to admit being part of this film. This this movie was as close to unproduced as you can be and still be a god-awful movie. I expected a little gnome to come and peel the YouTube logo back from my screen. (laughs) No, man, we're not fucking with this one. If you want to watch it, you can watch it. This is some deep web shit. And then... And then, so instead of production logos, we get an opening title card that just says, South Texas. <laughs> really bad start. Yeah. <laughs> South Texas, the only wrong way to leave North Texas. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. And so the narrator comes up and he goes, I'm Dilly Bale. <laughs> and I wrote in my nose, no, the fuck you aren't, man. Shut up. Okay, he looks like his name is okay. Dilly Bill. Yeah. He looks, Just right. He looks like Dana Carvey going as Garth, going as a cowboy. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. Like, like if Kids in the Hall did a Western. Yes, yeah. yeah. That's he, like Dave Foley. Yeah. Right. It's a Masters of Disguise 3, the one that went straight to Redbox. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> but if you push the button, it was just like, really? <laughs> Master of Disguise 3? So, and, and then you, you, you think to yourself, like, I wonder how long it's going to take for this movie to get terrifying. And the next sentence after I'm Dilly Bill is, lately I've been thinking a lot about my long lost love from second grade. Not great. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Yeah. And then the next sentence from the movie is like, you might be thinking, well, that's dumb. You were seven. And then the movie pauses and they're like, anyway, we're just going to do that. That is the movie, though. <laughs> That's our movie. People say to me, don't be in love with a child. And I say, have you tried Sparkle Donkey? <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Because it will open your mind. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Say, He's here, man. He's here in He's the here audience. He's here. He did so sparkle. many Where's nice Sparkle things? Donkey? Where is he? He doesn't want here. to admit it now. He doesn't want to admit it. Yeah. So... Oh, my brand that you just yeah. associated <laughs> openly with pedophilia and incest? No woos from me, gentlemen. Yes. No woos from me. So, yeah, so we're 27 seconds into the movie, and our protagonist is having romantic thoughts about a seven-year-old. Her name is Kitty Clip. <laughs> and at this one, I'm writing on my notes. I'm like, just say one normal fucking name. I dare you. I just want to know you can do it. Movie. The names in this movie were written by John Wayne Gacy as he stuffed a head... <laughs> Like, over the fence, like Wilson, the nair, just, uh, what's my name? Steve Wearson. <laughs> so, uh, uh, listeners at home, Eli is pushing a dismembered head into a grave of some sort. It trash was a bowling bag. bag in my okay, head. Okay, all right, okay, all right, trash bag. I, I was close. So, yeah, so the, the narrator's like, you know, I've been stalking that seven-year-old for a long time, but... I've looked everywhere for her. The internet. (laughs) End of list. (laughs) So, okay. So then we we flash back to the day that she left for Michigan in her mom's station wagon. He he says, I still cry about that to this day. And I'm like, what? You should try better help online therapy. (laughs) They're going to hold there's a discount that you can get. This is also where the credits tell us that this movie was written by Gary Bozek. Yes. I wrote in my notes, Eli, you have to tell me if you wrote this movie. It's like being uh, <laughs> so, Show us your dick. So, yeah, yeah, if you were here live. Yeah. Um, but he's like, but I've got my bags all packed for Michigan. I'm going to go find her. And then he gets in fucking Heath's car. And he, yeah, 
he's an oil baron. Yeah, that's what they say. You know, we learn he's a millionaire oil baron. He has a 2005 Subaru. Or yes. <laughs> it's no a good. weird recurring theme in our Christian movies that for no reason they just always make themselves millionaires. Right. Like a child having to add superpowers to explain why they just fell down. <laughs> It never matters to the movie. He's just like, and also I'm a millionaire. Yep. <laughs> 11 inches. <laughs> Put it in the script. So. <laughs> this is all I've got. <laughs> Here's your tape. So then. So ah. the ta- <laughs> one of them got it. So yeah, I just no, knew, it's all right. As long as one person I needed gets one it. person to be like, oh. So. <laughs> So the title cuts in like a fucking video game from 1991, right? And then we get Dilly pulling up to the House of Pancakes, not the international one. They couldn't get the rights to that. (laughs) It was just this domestic House of Pancakes. Okay, in fairness, as a Michigander, Mm -hmm. the nationalist House of Pancakes is all... (laughs) All the houses of the pancakes in Michigan are nationalist. Okay, all right, no, I get it. FEMA House of Pancakes. (laughs) So he walks into this diner, this house of pancakes. He's dressed like he just told his mom that he had the cowboy show last fucking night. Mm-hmm. And she had to whip something up. Everything looks green screened, even though it isn't, because they don't know how lighting works. <laughs> and so he sits down, and the waitress comes up, and he's like, she's like, this is the actual exchange that happens word for word in the movie. Where are you headed? He says, Milford, Michigan. She says, that's a long way. He says, I haven't seen or heard from her since the second grade. <laughs> Dude, what? Call the cops. <laughs> what the fuck is that other line? If you don't call the cops when someone says that to you, you're an accomplice. <laughs> Straight up. Start dusting your counter for fingerprints. That is what your day should be now. So You're getting a Netflix documentary. <laughs> but, but I also love, because like... Like everyone else in this movie, when he says, well, I'm looking for the the girl I was in love with when I was seven years old. Like everyone else, they're like, well, that's fucking dumb. Yeah. Right? Because the waitress is like, well, that would be a stupid plot for a movie. What the fuck are you even thinking? It's too late. I already bought this Woody costume from Halloween (laughs) Adventure. (laughs) Please just yes and my stupid plot. But the waitress's name is Jane. So someone has a normal human name. And this is where we meet uh, Heath's best worst. (laughs) This woman is great because she's obviously, she's not an actor. And the director said to her, be angry. So she goes with apoplectic rage, Mm -hmm. right? And she screams at the top of her lungs, bring me more fucking coffee! And everybody else is like, nailed it. Like an ER doctor who needs paddles. Yeah. (laughs) At the Nationalist House of Pancakes, like, <laughs> this is pretty standard. I feel like she went method and she nailed so, it. All right. And, of course, he, he, the waitress is like, well, you'd need a miracle to even find her. And he's like, well, this is a Christian movie, so there. Yeah. Right? We serve a God of miracles. It's so weird to watch a person with those teeth say the words, we serve a God of miracles. My dude, he could not grow bones out of your skull in a single direction. (laughs) You know who's nailing it? The guy who made this. So, all right. Quit making fun of my people. (laughs) So... Made fun of Heath's people on your way in, and now my with the potatoes. Yeah, I'll do Jews on the way out. Oh, okay, all right. No, that's, as long as you balance it out. So yeah. So then he he goes up. She goes, "Well, I don't see God," and he goes, "Well, he's invisible." Can I say? However, three hundred and ninety-six Christian movies. First time we've heard that. Yes. One. No, that's fair. But I just I want I I wrote my notes at that point. I'm like Christians. Pause for a second. Think about how fucking stupid that would sound for any other argument. That's how stupid it sounds. <laughs> Think right? of the category you are in where you've just said, well, he's invisible. It's you. It's a nine-year-old who ate a cookie he shouldn't have. <laughs> and it's a guy who's about to be involuntarily committed wearing my sneakers. <laughs> <laughs> so. But 
like Jane the waitress is like, fuck you and your God, your God killed my husband. And he's like, well, that's, um, I don't know. This is, I don't have anything for it's, that. It's, he goes, I had no idea. And I wrote in my notes that people die? <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, it explains the outfit. <laughs> I too would dress like that if I thought I was immortal <laughs> and had forever to try things out. I like that this is an atheist diner server in Michigan. Right? Like your typical atheist. She's like, no, my husband died of atheism cancer mm-hmm. or whatever. Yep. And th- but then he's like, fuck, checkmate me kind yep. of. <laughs> he just like walks out. One time I need somebody in real life to do that. Just be like, I'm not a Christian anymore. It's evil. It's really bad. I have to stop. Yeah. It's, it's terrible. Right? I feel like that's our audience, Heath. Yeah, right, right. No, I, got, I think oh. we might have a few of them right here. All right. Keep doing it. Yeah, so after that goddamn dialogue written by a person who heard once about human interactions as he was falling asleep, Dilly leaves. And he goes, oh, well, you know what? I left from there and went to a church to get right with God. All that no praying meant I needed to pray. Yes, exactly. So we watch him at a big cross. He's, he's praying to God. There's this really great moment where he's like, he's feeling discouraged because it's been, you know, three fucking minutes already. And he asks God for a sign. He's like, you know, if I should keep going, God, give me a sign. Okay. This is the best. And then nothing happens. Nothing, nothing happens. I'm wa- I wa- you saw the movie. You're watching very, the movie. Very, very nothing. A nothing bird, happens. A bird doesn't even flutter no. like a light on a nearby fucking stick or some shit. Nothing. You, can, it's, you made it's the movie. It's your movie. It's your movie. Yes. Nothing yes. happens. And he's like, thank you. God. Yes. Is that a movie character trying to gaslight the audience of I the don't movie? know. Like, I was he watching. made the movie. It's you can't so trick me. What's that over there off camera? Fuck, that's Zelda. So, <laughs> so but now he's got, God has, has apparently spoken to him. So he's, he's, he's back in. And then we get a, apparently, I guess he's now in Michigan, we get a shot of, a montage of shots of him holding a poster board sign that says, looking for kitty clip. And can I just say, if you see a sign that I can only describe as hand scrawled. Yes. And a gentleman who looks like this, who is looking for anyone, you should be seeking to actively hide whoever they're looking for. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, that person? Absolutely. Like, Marilyn Manson scrawled in Sharon Tate's blood more <laughs> orderly and normally yes. than he writes looking for Kitty Cliff. Well, and it really says a lot about this movie that they didn't spring for the good poster board. Yeah. Right? So by the end of the montage, he's holding this thing, and it's like this, and he's <laughs> folding around like, damn. damn. Yeah. If only he had had Sparkle Donkey tequila. <laughs> It'll keep you up. Um, Sparkle Donkey tequila is not intended to diagnose or cure any disease. I'm, don't worry. Except <laughs> not fucking your dad. <laughs> the disease. So, so we, get a, uh, we get a montage of this having been a dumb idea, Right. And he's, like, shoving the sign in people's faces. Right. Like, they can't read it from nine feet away. (laughs) No, I got it, man. Yeah. But just then, the bastard child of Troy Palamalu and Dave (laughs) Kroll. Okay, this is Cecil in porn, right? This is porn Cecil. Or as we call him, Caliente. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. So, but he notices the sign. He runs out and he's like, oh, you're looking for Kitty Clip? Yeah, I know where she is. Let me give you weirdly specific directions for this being a movie, right? Does he not come off as a sexual partner of Kitty here? Yeah, well, because he says, like, how do you know her? And he doesn't say. He just says, I've known her for a long time. You said that really long. Yeah. Long time. <laughs> When a man like that sexual beautiful. intercourse with her is it happens. Yeah. Yeah. When a man that beautiful with hair that long says he's known someone for a long time, they fucking. Yeah, no. He's, he means an hour and 14 minutes, yeah. <laughs> so 
braggy. So t- <laughs> somebody doesn't need any sparkle talkie tequila. <laughs> <laughs> so so he turns away and he's like, "Really? She lives up that road?" But yes, the second I turn my fucking back, right? The goddamn. All right. <laughs> So, so he goes, he goes, wait, she lives up that road, and then he turns back, and Palomalu Light or whatever has disappeared like <sighs> Batman. Disappeared. So basically, that was the ghost of, like, stalker presence <laughs> in this movie. <laughs> like, he doesn't teach any lessons, but no. he, like, helps you stalk a little bit. No. Weird. Or- and I guess... Because he is Jesus Christ in this, right? That's like his... Well, the, yeah, the, the yeah. credits at the end list him as the angel. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so he is embodiment of present. Christ. Yeah. So Jesus Christ, just to keep track since he died, toast and helping out pedophile stalkers. Yes. <laughs> so far, he's got a theme. Um, so, okay. So he drives off, uh, Dilly Bill does. He drives away, and we cut to him having been pulled over because you know... They tried for a fucking hour and a half to figure out how to film getting pulled over. And finally, they're like, fuck it. He's already pulled over (laughs) when the scene starts. He's just already done been pulled over. We've hit the cameraman with the car six and a half times now, guys. (laughs) What the fuck is a tripod? Stop saying it. Stop making up words. (laughs) How'd they hit him half a time? (laughs) They just nicked him on my one time. He was trying to do a vertical leap onto the stage. And it was, <laughs> um, I got it the first time, guys. I did get my... He got it, and then he didn't accept it. Like a lemur. He... Whoo, and they jumped back down, and I was like, amazing, you did it, Grandpa. And he was like, wait, no, I can do better. Sparkirk! <laughs> like the third act of Million Dollar Baby. <laughs> And Lucinda just laughed and laughed. She would Clint East, would you? So, <laughs> That's real love right no, there. No, she would, though, yeah. yeah. So, okay. So, anyway, so, so Dilly's getting bowled over, and there's this great moment where the cop has got to write him a ticket, but they didn't have fake ticket money, so he's, like, writing it out of, like, those one of, those, like, four for five dollars memo books you get at Dwayne Reed or whatever. Right. It would have been like three for five dollars to get the one that looks like it. But yeah. Yeah. It's a spiral <laughs> right. notebook. It's fine. <laughs> so yeah, so he writes him a ticket and then he's like, where are you going? And he goes, I don't want to tell you the yeah. plot of this movie. This is, this is every- Even if you have a better answer than to stalk my second grade love, don't answer. Is <laughs> it right? Lie. Yeah, no make shit. Make up a lie. I mean, no if anyone's going to be sympathetic, it's a cop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell yeah, man. Good for so- you. <laughs> so I thought they- I was going to have to like stop crime or something, but now no, get on out there. So the cop says, I'm giving you a ticket for a tail light out. He rips his like fucking spiral notebook thing away, gives it, hands it to him. And he drives away. And for like 17 goddamn minutes, we watched Dilly Bill go, I don't have a tail light out. Huh? Huh? Tail light? Fuck. The- no, not. It just goes on forever. For like ever. That. And what I think was happening is the star director writer of this movie was like, I'll just do a bunch of takes of me being like, tail light. And then he sat there with iMovie, the free version, and was like, this is uncuttable. They're like all, all good. <laughs> I'm nailing every single take. I'm like a young Marlon Brando. There's nothing here to cut. <laughs> so, There's when the character was born and when the character ceased to be. <laughs> He's Keats. He's Keats. And also, like, so he gets out to check his taillight, and the music like checks to see if this is a fucking cartoon for a minute here. <laughs> really weird and then like another car plows into his off off camera <laughs> and then a wreck car money for this motherfucker i like that the truck driver who smashes into him for no reason was beeping his horn on yeah. the way in he wanted to hit him politely get off the side of the road right. man <laughs> also according to the movie this was part of god's plan yes what why? Thank you. Why? It, it never matters to the fucking movie. 
In any way, because right, right, then the very next scene, we see him, see him walking down the road with his suitcase going like, they said it would take a week to get my car fixed. And like, oh, so now he's stranded here for a week or whatever. But that never fucking matters. Nope, never happens. Oh, never God happens. is like, you guys making fun of my 2005 Subaru. I feel like he's yeah. like, you got to <laughs> you gotta move on, man. It's a lot of coming. And his car, much like yours, was on fire. Yeah, yeah no, that's true. That's true. So, okay, so he, he comes up to this farm. And he starts wandering up. This is the farm where Kitty Clip lives or where the angel told him Kitty Clip lived or Jesus or whoever it was. And she, he sees this dude on a, on a riding lawnmower, right? Because they didn't have tractor money. <laughs> um, and he gets off. And there's this great moment where Dilly is like, oh, she's married. Well, shit. <laughs> I was like, walk away credits, walk away credits. This would be awesome. <laughs> Oh, see, I was like, please let Kitty be a trans man. Please let Kitty be a trans. Watch this Christian guy have a breakdown yes. in the front lawn. <laughs> no! A librarian laughs as she tucks a book back onto the shelf. <laughs> it's all those drag performances yeah, that existed. So, so but... But no, unfortunately. Thanks, <laughs> but unfortunately, though, this is Kitty's brother Rex, who has a absolutely Marsh-esque Texas accent. He's amazing. <laughs> Why out be there, partner? And he says, he's like, I'm Dilly Bill. I'm here to see Kitty Clip. And he says, Oh, well, I guess I should give you a giant hug, regardless of whether we're both wearing lav mics. <laughs> <laughs> And what's funny is the actor playing Dilly, who's also the director and star and the writer, he knows they shouldn't hug. So it just seems like he's terrifyingly yes. homophobic. <laughs> he's like, get in here, brother. He's like, no, the mic's the mic. I mean, I hate men. What? Ah! So, are you sure you're not kidding? <laughs> this is this is great moment where he's like, um, he says, well, I'd like to go in and see Kitty. And Rex is like, well, she isn't quite like you remember. I'm like, she was seven. He remembers the fucking thing. If she was like he remembered, that'd be worth mentioning. Yeah. <laughs> be, ca- be careful. She's still seven. Right. <laughs> That's how you know you're beautiful minding. <laughs> <laughs> so based on the vibe in this moment, it was either, yeah, Kitty is trans. Right. Kitty is a zombie in a cage, perhaps. <laughs> or... I don't think the trans members of our audience are going to love that comparison. <laughs> These are separate things. I know that people can be two kinds of things. So. <laughs> Listen, the nuance that this movie is capable of, I feel like that's what they landed okay, on. Okay, sure. Yeah. And also terminal cancer, I felt like was involved. Was, yeah. That was my guess here. I was thinking cancer. that Kitty was a trans man zombie with terminal cancer. Yeah. I, that's, that's exactly correct. I'd so, watch it. So, <laughs> we, we would make you watch it, yes. <laughs> So that they would make you watch it. (laughs) This is me doing the Philadelphia monologue. I was there. (laughs) You guys saw Philadelphia. It's a good movie. (laughs) But I'm a zombie trans man. You're pretty much nailing it. Yeah. Um, So rewatch Philadelphia. You'll see that impersonation. You'll be like, you like nailed it. (laughs) So they head inside. Rex runs upstairs to check on Kitty, but she's on the couch downstairs. This is where we first realize that the actor playing Kitty is a solid 20 years older than the actor playing Dilly, mm-hmm. right? Which, I mean, fine, you know, that's, that's fine, but, like, they were supposed to be in the seventh grade together, which means she was 27 fucking years old <laughs> in the seventh grade, which is weird. I was like, was Kitty the teacher? <laughs> okay. yeah. Now it's a Christian movie. <laughs> Like the president of France, right? Yeah. So there's also so he he sees her and they come he goes running into the living room. Now she's got a bunch of hair clips in her hair, which is why she is Kitty Clip. So his sign was using her nickname from second grade. Yes. And he was hoping somebody in Michigan would know it. Either that or her last name is Clip and she's really leaning into she's it. Got yeah. it. Yeah. It's one of those two things. 
And she's like, I don't recognize you. I'm like, yeah, because the last time you saw me was seven years old. How would you recognize? It would be fucking impossible. He responds to, I don't recognize you with, your purdy is a peach. Yep. Which can only be met with gunfire. That's the only, that's the only response. Yes. He's Not in, a court in this nation that convict you. Oh, he's in her home. Yeah, yeah no, absolutely. Your Honor, he said Purdy is... You, you had me at Purdy. I don't care what he said you were Purdy as. And so Rex is looking for Kitty upstairs. The music is pretty sure that he's going to come back down as a fucking cartoon cat with its tail on fire. <laughs> it, it felt like someone had told the music guy, hey man, you've been using too much cartoon music in the fucking movies, okay? You're not allowed to use any cartoon music in this one, okay? Fuck you. (laughs) I'm using (laughs) all of it. (laughs) How you like that, asshole? (laughs) Find someone else with a Casio keyboard. (laughs) That's right, you won't. That's... That's what you're missing out on. Nope, yep, yep. So we hear Rex upstairs calling for Kitty, where are you? And Dilly turns to Kitty and says, that's Rex. It's like, you're in her fucking house and it's her fucking brother. Why the fuck? That is the most mansplaining moment I've ever witnessed. (laughs) Jesus. But he comes down and there's, like, we can tell something's up, right? Because Rex is really surprised to see her downstairs. So, you know, mystery afoot and all that. Right, but because these people can't act, it's way less There's a Dark Secret and way more M. Night Shyamalan's The Visit. <laughs> right, like I was really hoping for a Skype call towards the end of That's not Kitty Clip! <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so Rex was like, well, gosh darn it, I'm so excited, I'm going to make y'all a gourmet dinner. And uh, Thank you, yes. yeah. No one's ever said that in that accent and been correct. (laughs) There's always just been a dead possum being taken down from a hook. But with seasonings. (laughs) I hope you like Cajun spices. Because those aren't legally defined. (laughs) Sparkle donkey tequila. Cajun spice for her pleasure. (laughs) So Dilly's like, oh, good, a gourmet dinner. And then he puts his shod fucking feet up on the guy's couch and goes to sleep. Yeah. Who the fuck does that? I nap in people's houses. <laughs> with your shoes I'm on? Being honest. In the, in the, okay. I, sometimes I fall asleep. Right. He'll yeah, curl up with your fair. dog. That's it's fair. weird. Yeah. Well, that, that's true. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. We can't take breaks on major plot points on this one because there's no fucking plot on this one. So we're just going to pause right there. But we'll be back in a minute with even more... Dilly Loves Kitty. (laughs) Jesus. Jesus of Nazareth. Yes, Dad slash God. What? (laughs) Did I hear you just come back from Earth? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I I popped out for a second. Did a little thing. For... For, I swear, if you've been appearing on Toast again... No, 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 no. It's just this guy, he's looking for his long-lost love, and um, figured I'd help him out. Oh, well, that's my boy, such a softie. Yeah, what can I say? I'm a romantic. You know All right, I mean? yeah. Right. So um, so tell me about this couple. Who are they? Sorry, aren't you, aren't you omniscient? Aren't you me? Okay, that... <laughs> it's confusing. Sparkle donkey. Well... <laughs> So his, we'd fuck each other. His name is Dilly. No, I get, I got it. Oh, believe me, I get it. All right, good. I'm the ghost. (laughs) Get out of the sketch, Holy Ghost. You're not in the sketch. (laughs) You guys never use me. (laughs) So. No, I'm fine. I'm Jesus. So you have Jesus. Tell me again mm-hmm. about this yeah, couple. You're God and I'm Jesus. Mm-hmm. We're talking mm-hmm. yep. to each yep. other. Mm-hmm. So I, here's what I'm doing. Uh, this guy's name's Dilly, who I'm helping out. And mm-hmm. uh, you know, her name's Kitty, who he's mm-hmm. looking for. Mm-hmm. And uh, they were in love 
in uh, second grade. Okay, so I feel and, like we probably shouldn't call that love. And let me finish. And ever since then, he's carried her picture in hopes of meeting her again. Uh, of, a, of a seven-year-old. Se- seven-year-old. So, yep. so, son, you saw a guy who carries around a picture of a second grader mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because he's in love with her. In love, yep. And you gave him directions to her house. <laughs> just, just remind me, um, how old was mom when... Wait, wait, you know what? Let's, let's just, you know, we'll just drop it. We'll drop it. We're good. That's what I thought. Thank you. And we're back! <laughs> That's right, I'll use that fucking applause while it's here. And we're going to rejoin the action with everybody sitting down to Rex's gourmet dinner in what these actors are sure is the funniest fucking scene (laughs) since the end of Dr. Strangelove, right? This became a horror movie for the next 11 minutes, right? For the next rest of the movie. Mm -hmm. Really? And before. Yeah. So here's the gag. Instead of serving them a gourmet dinner, he served them a dinner where everything is liquid. Now... We have a term for foods that are... That's soup, right? He served them... They, these people, they went through all of the writing of this scene and the filming of this scene, and if you watch the outtakes, the cracking up uncontrollably of the scene without ever going like, oh, fuck, y'all, that's just soup. That's not funny. There's nothing... Unless Bryce Blankenagel's involved, there's nothing funny about soup, right? He's not involved, is he? I've had bad experiences in this theater. <laughs> So, so everybody's like, like, they're like, oh, this is gross because it's liquid. And he goes, that's grade A liquid turkey. And that's what I wrote in my notes. This movie is like listening to other people's inside jokes, right? <laughs> you just ever hang out with people, two people who've known each other since they were fucking 12 or some shit. And they're constantly telling jokes that you don't get. And you're like, I bet that's it's funny, huh? I bet she is weird. Yeah. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any universal experiences? <laughs> <laughs> No, but I wrote my notes. I was like, I guarantee you this scene came up because two of them were sitting around late one night after having too much diet soda or whatever. And one of them said liquid turkey. They both cracked up till they fucking cried. Right? And then one of them's like, this, that's going, that's got to go in the movie now. That was too funny. And, and I wrote that in my notes. And then in the outtakes of the goddamn movie, you, you actually see that happen. So I nailed it. And then they had to commit to having liquid turkey as like a pot. Yeah. Like, it's, a couple of things. it's as close as anything else in the movie to the plot. Yeah. So liquid turkey is the hiring me of this movie. Ah, <laughs> <It's, yeah. laughs> oh, shit. The dog's going to be like a big part of the podcast now. <laughs> okay. Going to introduce me to shows and stuff. A yeah. fairy is mad at me? <laughs> So, yeah, so, but this is where we learn that Dilly inherited his parents' oil company. It's a mom and pop oil company that they had. We also learn that neither him nor Kitty ever got married. So, you know, they're available for each the, other. When he asked if she got married, she said, I'll be waiting till the cows come home. And I was like, What? And then Rex, her brother, goes, Ain't no cows around here. What the fuck do you mean, Rex? In Michigan? <laughs> Actually, quite a few cows in Michigan. Yeah. I feel like there are more than one. And so she's like, wait a minute, hold on a second. I remember you. And I'm like, he, you've been calling him by name and he never introduced. Of course you fucking remember him. Apparently she wasn't supposed to until just then. And she's like, aren't you the guy who used to push me off the teeter-totter in second grade? So apparently she remembers the relationship quite differently than he did. She's like, how did you find me? He's like, well, it all started when Cecil fucked Troy Palomalu. Yeah, right. Exactly. I wanted an honest answer there. I was like, so I stalked you like a bum. Yes. Actually, let me rewind it. So centuries of misogyny that makes it so like women are objects that you win in video games. And I thought that was how it works. <laughs> Almost gave up. God gave me a sign. No, he didn't. I lied about it. Gaslit myself. Porn Cecil, he's a ghost, by the way. And 
now I'm on a podcast about bad movies. <laughs> I just... I love... I, I don't know that religion has ever been described better than I gaslit myself. That was, that was really good. It was really good, right? Where's that T-shirt? Yeah, right? So, and then there's this moment where he likes, he's like, so Kitty, how long have you been in Michigan? And Rex cuts in to answer for her as he constantly does through this whole sequence. There's eventually going to be a reason for that, but we're not privy to it at the moment. And at this point, she looks around and she goes, Rex, how come the house looks different to me than it used to? And I wanted so bad for him to just go, well, we don't really know how to do lighting, Kitty. (laughs) We turned on all the living room lights and we didn't get it. So we got that circle light my niece has for her OnlyFans. <laughs> and we just... <laughs> we just pointed it at us, but it's not doing much. It's <laughs> much like my niece's OnlyFans. <laughs> Except when I drink my sparkle Sparkled talking down tequila. Down. <laughs> Sparkle Donkey, watch your niece's OnlyFans. <laughs> I'm just giving you guys gold tonight. My, my niece is in the fucking audience, man. Oh, God damn. And I would watch her OnlyFans. Oh, That's a compliment. It's a nice thing to say. It's a compliment. It's a nice thing. It's a pause and giving a compliment. Okay. All I've right. loved her since she was a second grader. <laughs> Oh God, the dude's gonna come back and take back his sparkle dog. He's like, I don't want to, I didn't realize what I was Just getting into. Just duct tape's not representative <laughs> of. So, so then Rex is like, well, hey, Kitty, after we drink our turkey, you want to go out and um, hang some Christmas decorations? And they're like, but it's not Christmas. And he goes, doesn't matter. And I'm like, yeah, I guess nothing fucking matters, man. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I love how many times all caps, what the fuck is happening appears in Heath's I notes. I think this was yeah, my ninth. A lot of our notes. I think this is my ninth. And Heath and Eli has a bunch of them too. <laughs> At this point, my notes are, what the fuck is happening? Oh, I get it. I died and went to hell. <laughs> I can't tell you a scarier scene in a movie than this one. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So they, they head outside after their 2.30 p.m. dinner and, and to hang some Christmas decorations. And then they decide they're going to go to the cider mill. Mm-hmm. Right? Do they mill cider? I think so. They mill it? I don't know. It's like with a... There's a wheel. The wheel crushes the apples? I don't know. You're cider. asking me about fucking cider. Sparkle donkey. Somebody says big thumbs up on they mill cider. All right. Okay. I feel like so, you can just... Okay. So, and then, so Dilly Learns says... today how cider mills work. Fuck yeah, man. So, Dilly says to Rex at this point, he says, hey, would you mind if I just took your sister on a date and you didn't tag along? And, which is a weird thing to ask your fucking brother, right? But then, Rex goes, yeah, I wouldn't mind. No, you can't do that. No. Which and is answers, even weirder. Answers, I have my reasons. Yes. Sparkle donkey to <laughs> The sparkle donkey guy sitting back there going, at two, Noah. <laughs> really? I thought I could count him. He's not here anymore. <laughs> no, he's, We're going to get to the venue later. It's going to be locked. No, if you look up in the rafters, he's hanging and gently swinging. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> so, it's... So he's like, but why can't I go on a date with your sister? He's like, just get in the truck, Dilly. Let me throw this out there. Just get in the truck. Scariest human sentence. (laughs) Right? After you're purtier than a peach. (laughs) So, okay. So we cut to the cider mill. There's a great moment where this scene opens with Dilly pulling up this gallon jug and saying, you want more cider? And every one of us has the words, gallon jug of urine. In our notes, nobody saw the dailies and was like, that's a gallon of urine. Right. We're showing a gallon it's of urine. It's obviously, very obviously, a gallon of urine. So, at a cider mill, do you buy a gallon or just like share it? Is that what you do when you go to a I cider would, mill? 
it's, yes. it's weird that you're exploring the inner workings of a cider mill. I think this is a nice break from jokes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just sometimes we just stop and we learn and we learn and, we learn. <laughs> and we're not afraid to be vulnerable. Right. So sparkle donkey. <laughs> Wholesome. The tequila for learning about cider. <laughs> uh, he's dead. I don't know why I'm checking in. <laughs> he's in the void. So, and of course, just to inject a little humor into this moment, we've got Dilly and uh, Kitty enjoying their their cider or failing to because it's obviously a gallon jug of urine. And then we've got Rex behind him trying to hock liquid turkey mm-hmm. to the other people at the mill. I like that they yell at him. They're like, Rex, your, your liquid turkey's ruining the date vibe. You're fucking it up with the liquid turkey. Yeah. Like me and Anna on vacation with Heath. Rex. <laughs> you trying to crack your neck? Were you trying to crack your neck just now? Those... Yeah. He goes, your brother sure is protective. I'm like, that's not the word you're looking for, no. man. <laughs> Have you heard of Sparkle Donkey to <laughs> Bulletproof vest is protective. My brother is something very <laughs> different. And then, again, like they're struggling to find the script of the movie. He goes like, sad the wheel isn't working. And he says, well, a wheel doesn't have to spin on the outside to have cider and donuts on the inside. <laughs> and this works as flirting. Yes. Uh, very successfully. Actually, actually, Heath, that is exactly how flirting is done. Isn't it, Eli? Absolutely, yeah. Heath, yes. <laughs> You're fucking it up. <laughs> Am I right, ladies? <laughs> Would they lie to you? <laughs> so. I am going to try this. <laughs> it's going to go badly. <laughs> so. Hi, what are you drinking? <laughs> You know, just because a wheel... Ow, mace, ow! (laughs) You had that in your hand already. (laughs) It was because I had the sparkle donkey? Yeah, no, that makes sense. (laughs) So... So Kitty Clip explains that she's tired and would like this scene to be over now. Mm -hmm. So would I. Yep, I was with her. I was with her. I wrote in my notes, I'm tired, not dying, just normal tired. Just normal tired, yeah. So then we head back to the farm for her to take a nap, and this is where we see, so Dilly's outside feeding the horses. He lives there now. Yeah, apparently he has farm. chores yeah, the horses. Now. Mm-hmm. He opens the scene by going, I don't feel like feeding the horses. And I look, I'm no farmer. I don't know if you can tell. I feel like you have to feed your farm animals even when you're sad. I feel like, yeah, yeah. No, I feel like right. that's not like other chores where you can be like, vacuuming can wait. Yeah, so, so, but Rex comes up to him as he's feeding the horses and he's like, Dilly, I hate to tell you this, but we're nearly halfway through the movie and we really have to establish a plot, so I'm gonna. They won't. He says, there's, well, yeah, right, nobody threatens to. He says, Kitty has old timer's disease. And they think that's a great bit. They use that uh, multiple times. Old, get it? Because it sounds like Alzheimer's. And then Dilly, he's not buying all this Alzheimer's shit, right? He storms off. He's like, no, the fuck she doesn't. And he wanders off. Yeah, his response is, whatever, Rex. <laughs> and can I just say, I wish that was in more dramas. <laughs> just like, <laughs> Sophie's Choice, which, which one comes with us? <gasps> whatever, Commander. <laughs> Did I live a good life? Whatever, I'll be in the car. (laughs) I was here, Philadelphia. (laughs) Whatever, Tom Hanks. (laughs) His name's not Tom Hanks in that movie. No, No, it's not. I don't think it is. It should have been. That would have been cool. (laughs) So, (laughs) why would that have been? It would have been fucking cool. All right, so, (laughs) I think that was a nice break from jokes. (laughs) So... (laughs) He storms, storms off, and Rex is angrily following along and explaining that she's been catatonic, because apparently they think that's an Alzheimer's thing. I don't think it is. But he says that she's been catatonic up until that day. And then she just woke up suddenly when she heard Dilly, and Dilly made her want to live again. But now she's catatonic, so apparently it didn't last. 
It was like, well, right up until that fucking line about the wheel and the donuts, I don't know what the fuck he was even going for there. So dumb. He says she woke up in a vegetative state. I wrote in my notes, hard to do that. <laughs> <laughs> that one's a challenge. This That's, movie's understanding of Alzheimer's is yeah. rough. Rough. They seem to think she, like, woke up but forgot verbs. Yes. From right. Alzheimer's. Yep. But if you like someone enough, you'll un-Alzheimer's... And you give him verbs back. For an afternoon Temporarily, date. temporarily, <laughs> yeah. Depending on if the wheel works. And, but I do love this line because he goes, as they're wandering off, he says, she's got Alzheimer's. And Dilly says to Rex, he's like, did a doctor tell you that? And I'm like, it is a gam movie. That's a legit question. <laughs> so... But yes, a doctor told him that 10 years ago, and again, I should point out that they're like storming away this whole time. This movie does not know how to film a walk and talk and certainly does not know how to mic a walk and talk. I'll tell you, tell you we're gonna, yeah, we're good the old time. But yeah, so, but he says, I want you to stick around and make Kitty want to live again, even though she's catatonic, right? So we go inside to see if uh, Dilly can, I guess, talk her out of her Alzheimer's again. And they're pretty sure that vegetative state just means lying there ignoring someone. Right. They mean catatonic. <laughs> and Dilly's like, I'm poking your face. Does this help the Alzheimer's? <laughs> Do you still have it? Quit it. I'm vegetating. <laughs> <laughs> Are Stop. you better? Stop. <laughs> I'm a vegetable. I'm like Terry Shabu. Jesus Christ. For the younger members of our audience. So, <laughs> that was a little gross. So then we, so then we cut. So we Thank fade, you. We watch her stare for a long time vegetatively. And then we fade to black. We cut to, I think, Dilly flirting with the horses since it's not going to work out on, with Kitty. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And then we get this other bizarre fucking exchange. And anybody, those of you who have watched the movie, back me up that this is actually what happens. Rex says, he's talking to the horses when Rex walks in. Rex says, is the horse talking back? Dilly says, they always do. <laughs> yep. And, and Rex goes, I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. This is what an insane person thinks is happening in a normal conversation, yeah. right? Like, they can't tell that the one sentence is related to the other one. Mm -hmm. Jesus. But then he says, he basically, he tries to talk Dilly into taking Kitty the way one might, like, you know, if you had a, a pet that couldn't come with you when you moved mm -hmm. or something. You've always gotten along with Spot. Yeah, <laughs> right. He's like, well, I know you just showed up yesterday and have an unhealthy obsession with my girl or my, my sister from when she was seven years old. Too much sparkle, don't you know? So, so would you like to stay with her forever and take care of her and wipe her fucking ass and change her diaper and dress her? And he's like, yes, I would. You said it too fast. You said it too fast. <laughs> You said it like fuck nurse fast. <laughs> yeah, he says, I feel bad. And he's like, don't. <laughs> don't look back. <laughs> he goes, he goes, does leaving my sister in the custody of some random pervert make me a bad person? And I'm like, yes. Yeah. Yep. It very much does. Mm -hmm. And But of course, Dilly's like, no, not at all. There's nothing, nothing to see here. Just move <laughs> along. And then he announces something very strange. He goes, well, you know, it's mostly that my son and wife miss me. Because he's been taking care of his sister without seeing them for eight, eight years. years. Eight years. He says, I, you know, I haven't seen my son in eight years. And I'm like, well, that's a you problem, man. That is, don't blame that shit on your sister. And then he says, and I just, I have to point this out, this Eli Bosnickian use of words here. He goes, and I quote, I implicitly trust you with my sister. <laughs> well, not now that you said it out loud. <laughs> if I was passing you on the street and you just grabbed her and started to walk away, I'd be like, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but he agrees that he's going to live with Kitty now and, and take care of her for the rest of his life. 
He says, I'm go- I'll, don't worry, I'll call a moving company and have them bring my stuff up. I'm like, that's not how moving companies work. The Hello, is this Dave's about? Movers? I live at 32 being there. Would you get all my belongings? <laughs> Will you grab all my oil? And- <laughs> <laughs> to Michigan. Come on by, I'll give you the keys. The password is 1111. Yeah. Because my name is Dilly Dill. Yeah. And then, okay, and so then we get the narration, it cuts in, he tells us about how, like, you know, how he adjusted to farm life over the next couple of days. I love it. It starts off with him going, I never realized how hard farm work was. Like, did you at least suspect it? I mean... Also, you're an oil millionaire. Just sell the fucking farm. Or hire some damn body to do the farm shit. Your oil's on the way up in loose handfuls from a movie, (laughs) so you're fine. He goes, my favorite thing to do was to pray. And I'm like, to, to pray for your life to not be like it is, though, yeah. right? Is what you're praying for? So that was just the, the, the point of the monologue is that he's having a great time and he's loving it, except he's constantly praying for it to be different than it is. We also see some of her vegetative state here where she drinks out of a cup and eats off a spoon. Yep. <laughs> I wonder if there was a point at one point where someone took him aside and was like, hey, man, I, you know vegetative states someone can't eat, right? And they were like, he was like, well, how would they eat then? And they were like, he was like, ew, gross. <laughs> I'm not putting that in my movie. <laughs> She's just a little vegetative state. <laughs> like those fingerling potatoes. She's in a baby carrot state. <laughs> I, will, I will say this was the first Alzheimer's montage that I ever saw. Sure. They actually do. It's like drinking tea with Alzheimer's. Yes. Applesauce with Alzheimer's. Yep. It's a good minute of Alzheimer's montage with music. Yep. Didn't see that coming. Nope. He okay. goes. <laughs> Just a doodly do to a blur. <laughs> Because of the yeah, Play, Alzheimer's playing peekaboo with stakes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Holy fucking! Where did you? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sparkle donkey. <laughs> peekaboo with stakes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, so now he's in charge with the uh, with the cataton of the catatonic woman that is, and the more you think about it, the creepier that situation gets. So we're going to give you some extra time to think about it. Uh, but first, let me give Act Three the hard sell here. Act Three. <laughs> I gotta call something Act Something. You know, it's just it's part of the job, man. Play yeah. along. Yes, and. <laughs> <laughs> so, will God answer Dilly's prayers and Miracle Kitty back to health? Will Dilly's... Pre- God damn it, spoilers. Spoilers. That's the fucking sparkle donkey guy, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I gotta tell you about spoilers. You ruin my business, I'll ruin yours. Let's, let's light this candle, motherfuckers. Turn a bit. Will... <laughs> You're fucking up my rule of threes, goddammit. Yes, and step two. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Will, Dilly pres- Will Dilly's presence... See, now you've got me all off fucking kilter. <laughs> Will Dilly's presence serve any function whatsoever in the film? If not, why the fuck would you make a movie about it? <laughs> Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the semi-catatonic conclusion of Dilly Loves Kitty. Uh, Dilly, can I talk to you for a minute? Well, sure, Rick. What is it? Hey, guys. Well, gosh, Dilly, I don't know how to break it to you, but but you see, Kitty, well, she's been dead for 20 years. What? No, no. I have not. A a while back, she got into a terrible, terrible truck accident, and she was thrown over 200 feet. And landed in the open mouth nope. of a wild nope. boar. Nope. It's 
It's none of this. It tore to pieces. It's gonna keep talking. And then I had to travel down into the underworld to what? retrieve her. Wow. Nope. Not wow. Well. Not wow. Well. It's just not. Just and, lying. And, none of this. and though my battles against Cerberus and the fourteen guardians of the hell planes were difficult. I knew returning my sister back to the homunculi I had built would make it all worthwhile. In Jesus' what? name. I'm right. Did, did you say homunculi? Anyway, now I must remount my pirate ship and protect the islands of Sea Crash before it's too late for something evil rises in okay. the deep. Now you're just doing Wizards of the Coast properties. That's obvious. All of so which... Sorry. All of which is to say, Dilly, will you marry my sister's ghost-infested homunculi? Yes, Rex, I will. For Jesus. For Jesus. Okay. <laughs> and we're back! <laughs> and this time... We're going to open up Act 3 with Rex having dinner with his wife and son. The son is about 26. <laughs> right? Years older than we are right now. Yeah. <laughs> Kitty's grandfather. Yeah, so... The ages in this movie are just all over the fucking place. But yeah, so then we have this weird moment where, like, the movie seems to realize, along with us, that the whole, like, him being gone for eight years doesn't make any fucking sense. And isn't relevant to the plot of the movie? No, nope, in no way is his family ever going to be relevant. Because they have this whole conversation about, like, well, why wouldn't we just move her here or us move there? I just, none of this. And then everybody's argument just has to be like, oh, fine, ruin my life then. Right? Because there's no, there's no way to get from there to here to there. It feels like the son is trying to defend the plot. Because... Because he'd be like, well, why wouldn't you just move out there? And he'd be like, I love my high school too much. And he's like, high school. And he's like, yep, I'm on my second time around. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a super duper uber senior. <laughs> well, no, I mean, we had a 26-year-old seventh grader earlier, or second grader, rather. Maybe in this world, you just loop back around when you right. graduate. It's a reincarnation yeah. education no, system. <laughs> And then he's like, well, I guess we could move her into this house. And he just goes, Grandpa built this house single-handedly. And I, think, I was like, I think he meant for his daughter to live there, too. <laughs> Son, as I die, promise me your sister will never receive medical <laughs> care in this house. <laughs> Not after what she did after all that sparkle donkey. <laughs> she may never cross this threshold again. <laughs> so Sparkle Donkey, never cross this threshold again. <laughs> All right, that one they might actually use, yeah. So yeah, so as the movie is asking us this question and we are asking the movie this question, finally Rex's wife is like, you want to go back, don't you? I'm like, how much does he hate his fucking family? He just got there, right? And he goes, well, Dilly and I could rotate. And the wife says, well, that's an awful lot to ask of someone. <laughs> that's half as much as you're already asking, though. Right? No, no, I, I will not be in the movie anymore. <laughs> <laughs> also, there's this great bit where the dad is, he's, they're having dinner together. The, dad, the dad's like, well, it's nice to at least eat solid food again. Now, I get that she had to have liquid food, but... But he could eat whatever the fuck he wanted, right? Nah, man, I saw those tickamatocks where you shave your head because somebody got cancer, no. and I thought, solidarity. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, so, and, so, and as we should also point out, by the way, th that throughout this entire conversation, everyone keeps forgetting their next line. And we just have to sit there and wait for him to remember because the editor doesn't help out at all, right? No. The editor's just like, you know what? Fuck you. You should have memorized the goddamn line. Yeah. <laughs> you should be off book by now. Ooh, I just had a great theory. You think it's Alzheimer's in the cast? Everyone in the movie <laughs> has Alzheimer's. Yeah. 
that would make a lot of, like a lot of the mm-hmm. movie falls into place at that point. Probably had producers, they just forgot. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, who were them fellas that came back? <laughs> also, and I, I feel you like I have to acknowledge this. Ronnie, the son, little tiny face, great big head. Mm-hmm. Right? Like to Charlie Kirk proportions, yeah. right? <laughs> Creepy shit. He's so silly looking. <laughs> he really Charlie is. Kirk. <laughs> so... So, but Ronnie's, we're gonna murder him later. We have a guillotine ready. What? Ready to go. We had to get a plus size to get all that head in. <laughs> we're trying to fit him in vertically. Charlie, can you work with us, bud? Okay, we're going. <laughs> it's an up and through. You know when you're gesture. putting a chair into a, t- a small it's, room, when you're you have to go around with the a door. football through C-shirt. a tire. Yeah, you, you gotta, gotta cinch it. <laughs> can we spiral Charlie Kirk into <laughs> a guillotine? I this mean, there's crazy. only one way to find out, right? <laughs> Seattle knows the answer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, enjoy this bit. I'm sure legally I have to cut it. Um, but, but, Ronnie, but Ronnie, like, he's so upset that he delivered his line so poorly that he storms off. Rex chases him. And then we're done with that scene. So then we cut to... <laughs> we cut to Dilly... That's how every scene ends. Fuck it. We're done with that yep, scene. Yep, that scene's over. <laughs> The actors might as well yeah. say that. And then we're done with that yeah. scene. Yeah. <laughs> we watch them get up from very squeaky chairs. Just, yeah. <laughs> I fucking suck. So we cut to Dilly watching Kitty sleep. Yeah, it's every bit as creepy as I just made it sound, yes. But we watch him, he's in a chair sitting there as she sleeps, falling asleep beside her, and it's, and it's just like, dude, don't do that. That's fucking gross. Stop. Just fucking stop. We're also watching him try to act not creepy. I don't know yeah. if you've ever seen a creep, well, you've seen me. If you've ever seen a creepy person be like, normal, normal. <laughs> the donuts and the cider are on the inside. inside. <laughs> so. Podcast. Flirter. I have podcast. <laughs> so. <laughs> so he goes out to the yard. Dilly goes out to the yard for a little musical interlude, a little sadness montage. This is where the camera guy, like, didn't know that he was filming in that moment. So he's just like, Poof! like, you... <laughs> <laughs> shit, I was riding the horses. So... I didn't know we were doing a montage today. <laughs> this was rough, too, because, I feel, again, I always feel bad for the musicians. They had to do, like, the music for degenerative brain disease. You're right. <laughs> Seems bad, but... Maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> the brain slowly dying mysterious ways. That's, like, that's the movie. <laughs> it is. It Sparkle is. donkey, your brain <laughs> slowly dying mysterious ways. ways. So, I think that one's actually already taken yeah. by Captain Morgan. Yeah. So, we <laughs> so he's outside being sad, music's playing, and then suddenly Kitty shows up. But she's not wearing the hair clips anymore. Now she's got a silly hat on because there's some kind of like weird, goofy headwear minimum for the actors right. in this fucking movie. <laughs> and the tragedy that they told this lovely 63-year-old woman <laughs> to get all dolled up. Yes. And she like went into the back of the closet. <sighs> moth, moth, moth. Moth, moth, moth. She picked out her favorite PTA dress. <laughs> He was like, this is for the sexy dance scene. And then, so, and then we get the first, the, the second best dance scene in the movie. Yeah. And what I love about this dance is that very clearly these two actors, Dilly and Kitty, they're going to dance in a field now. There is very clearly no music playing where they are, right? So there are different rhythms. They haven't agreed on any moves. So there's a lot of that, oh, you're going to spin. I stand and you spin. Okay, all right, we'll do that. There's a lot of that going on. You know, if you've ever been to a wedding where the couple didn't learn to dance for their first dance and you get to watch them realize, fuck, we should have learned to dance. (laughs) That's what we watch happen because they do spinny, spinny, and then they're like, well, 
That's all the dance I know, and there's well, three minutes and 26 seconds left in the book of fucking love. Well, and they do the, they do the thing where they, like, they're holding the, each other's arms and they're spinning around each other and shit like that, but, but she's 63 and has a bad hip, mm-hmm. right? So it looks like somebody who tried to leap onto the stage and <laughs> earlier this morning tried to do the shit. So that's they, always fun. They do a renaissance dance at one point by accident. They sort of do like a, I step forward and look at you from the side. And then you step forward and look at me from the side. <laughs> and they're both like, that was something. <laughs> Fuck, there's more? <laughs> okay, spin. <laughs> Eli... For those, for those listening at home, Eli just did the dance that he invented. <laughs> the Macarena. And oh, no, let's, oh, we've moved on to YMCA. <laughs> Eli is now staying alive. <laughs> Tonto Tobonic. <laughs> Apache. <laughs> Racist. What? We got it. <laughs> <laughs> so. But of course, this is all in Dilly's imagination. Or is it? Or is it? Well, yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll confuse us about that. The movie won't know if it's a doodly do later. No, no. They're exactly. going to try to decide. They ha- try count. to have it both ways, like the end of Inception. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so she disappears, and then he's just in the field spinning around like an idiot. And he's like, well, that's fucking, that sucks. And then, so sometime later, we get him. Now he's on the little riding lawnmower, and Rex pulls up in his truck. And we have this juxtaposition of the, fr- the first time that he came up to the house and met Rex, which, which is almost like a real filmmaking moment until they have <laughs> Dilly say, Why, wow, this is a juxtaposition of 11 scenes ago when you and I met in this manner. This is just like The Great Gatsby, the only book we've ever read. <laughs> I'm wearing a blue dress to represent freedom. You're wearing a red dress to represent whoredom. All right. <laughs> we did the art. I, so did that happen in Gatsby? Yeah. So I don't. I three don't English right. teachers and a librarian are like, I fucking yeah. love that joke. <laughs> I'm gonna turn so many kids trans now for that sake of that joke. So, and honestly, so Rex shows back up. I wanted the next couple of minutes of the movie to be Dilly trying to distract Rex long enough for him to run upstairs and change her out of the Batwoman-themed <laughs> lingerie she was wearing or something like that. That didn't happen. Have you ever heard about therapeutic swings? It's very important you get to say yes to this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so. So, but this is Rex coming back and saying, you know, I, earlier I asked you to watch over my sister and why one might have even mistaken that for the entire plot of the goddamn fucking movie, but no, I'm back now, never mind. <laughs> so then we cut upstairs, Dilly's talking with Kitty, and he's explaining that even if he has to stick around another 30 years, he will be there until she mercifully dies and releases him from this obligation. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's not what people in those situations want to hear. Just waiting on you to die. (laughs) Wink. I'm just saying. (laughs) And this is where he goes, and Kitty, I really love dancing with you in that doodly do. And she goes, I love dancing with you. She's catatonic up to this point she goes i love that dance too and all of us are like wait was it a fucking doodly do or was, not you she was to- like unswooshing the doodly yes <laughs> she, she was like it wasn't a doodly do so to be clear according to the movie she can disappear <laughs> because she disappeared at the end of that she scene teleports to the bonton where she picks up that dress okay <laughs> off the sail rack and then she <laughs> And then she teleports to the field uh-huh. for a quick, unchoreographed dance. Yep, yep. And then she talks about it in her catatonic state. Okay, <laughs> sorry, withdrawn. Movie makes yeah, sense. Exactly, yep. Well, there it is. And then she does my favorite prank and something that I'm going <laughs> to continue long after this movie is gone. She says, Dilly, promise me. Promise me you'll dance wherever you go. <laughs> we have no evidence that Dilly can dance and quite a bit that he cannot dance. 
which makes this an awesome prank. Yes, yes. So if the rest of this movie had been uh, like about him trying to get into the Joffrey or the Rockettes or some shit like that, I'd have loved this fucking movie. <laughs> right? The it, rest of this movie is just word for word, shot for shot, step it up with <laughs> Julia Stiles. I thought you were going to say Philadelphia again. <laughs> Or he just has to break dance his way from scene to yeah. scene and shit from that point out. But no, he doesn't have the guts. So, okay. So now, so then we cut to Dilly and Rex at Kitty's bedside. She's now in hospice or she's in some assisted living facility. The finale of the movie is hospice care. Yep. That is fucking bold. <laughs> It's, it's like the, everything they did in this movie was like a series of dares. They were like, you can't do a finale in hospice. They were like, hold my fucking... Sparkle Diet so, yes. <laughs> the tequila of choice for hospice, hospice. care. <laughs> Sparkle Donkey, what have you got to lose? <laughs> Sparkle Donkey, death with dick. <laughs> They might use one of these. I don't think they're going to use any of these. these. No, I think they might use a gun to shoot us to death. (laughs) There's also this great moment. So she's at hospice care. She's catatonic. And there's this lady holding her hand with a pen. And they're scribbling on it. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Am I going to have to tag in Marsh here? Is this... Is this facilitated communication? This was the best. I laughed for so long. Because a doctor, a hospice care doctor was like, all right. Gonna, I'm gonna do the scribble thing, and then she looks at it. And she's like, "It's it's just a scribble." Yep, it's just because I clearly was just doing it myself. She sucks. And then she's like, "Fuck it!" And the doctor just walks out. Well, it's a hospice. That's how that goes. She goes. She goes. I tried to like unlock her catatonia with my scribble method. That didn't work. We got nothing else. Medical science is done. <laughs> Let me see here. The voice of someone we like. Tried that. Drawing scribbles. Check. That's the list. That's that all is I, the uh, list. All right. It's funny. Someone wrote this with my hand while I was catatonic. So, <laughs> so that's all I've got. And I should be clear that Dilly is in the scene and not dancing. Right? No. I was very disappointed. Despite her singular request. The him. only thing she asked for as she died. Yes. So, but Dilly doesn't want her to die. I, I kind of do at this point, you know. She kind of does. She does. She, she does. does. She, does. she wants to die so she bad. She wants to sparkle down to you. Yeah. anymore, right? Hard. And so Dilly, I want to make sure that I have this right. Dilly writes a note with her dead hand. He just scribble hands with her too, yeah. To himself. To himself. That says, Dilly loves Kitty. Yes. Okay. But when you hadn't seen it yet, did you take any guesses as to what I was right, going to get written? Because we see him write something with her hand, and the movie gives us a long time to not know what yeah. it is. So at first, I thought it was going to be a perfect Jesus Christ. <laughs> Ooh. I thought that would have been good. I thought it was just going to be the words, I consent. Wow. Oh, no. Just... Oh, no. Okay. Do you feel the edges of the room uh, yeah, suck no. in for a second? <laughs> but the middle liked it. No, they, these, everyone decided it was okay together. But there was a vote in yeah, yeah, oh, Yes, yes. Oh, 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 we agree. It would have just kept yeah. rising. They would have rushed the stage and carried me off. <laughs> let's be honest. If you guys started rushing the stage, I'd be like, yeah, let's get him. <laughs> Honestly, I wanted the note to say something like, take me to fucking Seattle where death with decency is allowed. Yes. They let Thank you fucking you. kill. Yes. You let people kill themselves. Because of course you should. Eli, don't get any ideas. <laughs> I asked already and the guy was like, this is a deli. Anyway, it's a whole mess. <laughs> <laughs> we have avocado toast. Kill yourself. <laughs> Or so, fixed your bike. So then we cut immediately. He writes, Dilly loves Kitty with her hand. And then we cut to her goddamn funeral. <laughs> to be clear, God never miracled anything. Nope. This Not whole yet. movie is like, and I kept praying and praying that she would get better and miraculously recover, but nope. 
No. Nope. Just not just God just must have been on break or something. I don't God know. God was those. more in a GPS place at that point. <laughs> a lot of directions. So we're at the funeral, the, the pastor cuts in and he says, We're not here to mourn. And I'm like, I think I think most of them are there to mourn, man. I think so. <laughs> and this I don't know if anyone's ever been to like a real Christian funeral, but they'll do this. Yes. They'll be like, We're here to celebrate. And four people will be like, Woo! <laughs> <laughs> And all the honest people are like, fuck it up, dude. No. Yeah. But she's in heaven now. They're, they're celebrating her awesome death. And Ronnie, the 26-year-old son, is standing at the graveside with this gigantic smile on his face. It was, it was like viral. You remember Smile, that stupid, scary movie? And they had a bunch of people for viral marketing, like, go to baseball games and be like... Yeah. It was like Mar- Ronnie was deep in the lore of Smile. It was. This like, is a Smile prequel. It was like he was the one that poisoned her, and now he knows he got away with it. Yeah. <laughs> Try to sell my grandpa's fucking house. He built that house single-handedly. <laughs> You're a mean one. <laughs> so, so then Dilly drives back to Texas. The movie's almost over. Is he rewinding the movie for us? He really is. Right, no, they have to close the parentheses. It's filmmaking, you wouldn't understand. (laughs) So now he has to stop back by the House of Pancakes. From before, we have to close that loop. Who was worried about that? Who was like, but what happened with Atheist Jane at the diner? (laughs) We're going to find out. Jane shouted that from her shoot day. She was like, I want to know what happened. Jane, did you hear that? Man? that so they, the, the people demand more, more coffee. Shut the fuck up, Glenis. <laughs> <laughs> no, but luckily for him, Jane is working that day and remembers him and gives a shit, right? <laughs> and he lies to her about the plot of the movie. Absolutely. He's like, look, I've been reflecting and actually something very different happened than what y'all just watched. <laughs> He says, you know, I found her and we had many great memories together and I loved her. And we're like, we just watched the fucking movie. Also, I wouldn't use the word memories. Yeah. (laughs) That's their word. (laughs) You can call them memras. Oh, Jesus. So, but, but he says, but it turned out that she had Alzheimer's and so I just took care of her until she died. And Jane's like, Wow, that'd make a great plot for a movie, huh? <laughs> and we're like, nope, not as it turns out, it's not really. And then later in the movie, at some point, you could get off the tractor when the guy was coming in. He'd go earlier in the movie. You could wear the blue dress, he could wear the red dress and wear the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Why did we ban all the books from the library? <laughs> Oh, fuck, this is what we were capable of. (laughs) Why didn't we let him execute Charlie Kirk? (laughs) I feel like they could have twisted him. We could have gotten him in some gyroscope situation. It's not about his comfort. (laughs) Unlike Sparkle Donkey. (laughs) The tequila for your comfort. comfort. So. Of death. That's the only one that's going to make it in, minus the up death. Um, it's going to be a really weird cut. They're like, why was the live show only 11 minutes long? <laughs> it was mostly a murder plot. <laughs> <It's early there. laughs> so, but Jane is like, this is so sad. I'm getting the sniffles. And we're like, are you, though, actress? Are you? Are you really getting the sniffles? Well, no. Not really. I'm trying. I'm trying. But now, but she's like, but if God was so kind to you, how come he murdered my husband? And Dilly says, you know, I've been thinking about that, and when God murdered your husband, he gave you a gift. <laughs> what gift? What gift? What gift did the movie think was the so gift? So the, the gift that they thought was the time before God murdered him. All the times he didn't murder her husband the not murdering. were the gifts. Yes. Right. You gave the baby candy first. <laughs> <laughs> Before you took it away. <laughs> and yet all everyone says is taking candy from a baby. Yes. That's kind of bullshit. 
as my candy to begin with. I'm a worldview. You're Christianity. Yeah. yeah. So, so he Not leaves a note. Not having taken yet candy from a baby. Okay. Christianity. So he, so he leaves a note for her. He leaves an envelope for Jane, and he starts to walk away. But, and I, I wanted so bad for the note to just say, will you go with me? Check this box. But <laughs> it didn't. It didn't. But just as he's walking out, he remembers that this is the time on Sprockets when we dance. Sure the fuck is. And we get this bizarre half-ass Bollywood ending where he just dances his way back into the diner. And because it's a stupid fucking movie, everybody's like, why well, I, I want to dance with him instead of, what the fuck is wrong with that guy? But he, doesn't, he doesn't dance. The music starts and he, it's like... Boom, dun, dun, boom, dun, dun, boom, dun, dun, boom. You're not doing anything. You're just stepping back and forth. You have to dance. Dance now. Dance now. That's just a circle. You just did a circle. Are you picking up a chair? You're sitting. You're still. That's still nothing. <laughs> Thank you, Eli, for all that great radio. So, yeah, but, but now the whole house of pancakes is dancing along with him. The hop hop, if you will. <laughs> so the whole goddamn, this entire episode was leading to that fucking joke. If you don't like it, what the hell are you even doing here? That was... Thank you. The Thank Dilly Wood. Our screens are blank. It's just a note from Noah to us saying, if you interrupt me while I'm saying hop, hop, I'll kill you. <laughs> no, no, we don't have any notes. <laughs> You're welcome. So, so then he leaves, the music stops, and everybody looks around like, what the fuck was that scene for? Why did we do that? Like they were affected by a mutant power. Yes. <laughs> It felt like they maybe ambushed a real diner just live and did mm. that. Yeah. Yep. So he walks out, and damn if he doesn't see a damsel in distress, a woman that's like having trouble loading all her stuff into a van that also has a bunch of hair clips, just like Kitty Clip did. Hmm? <laughs> and that's how I met your mother. <laughs> like, that's what. The- that's what they were doing, right? They were doing like the worst episode of How I Met Your Mother. Well, except that, like, as near as we can tell, he never sees that woman again. Nope. Right? Because he, he, like, he's like, let me help you with your stuff. And then he just stares at her like this. <laughs> right. And she responds appropriately. And she's like, well, I should shoot you or run <laughs> over you with my van now. And she gets the fuck out of there. And then he does a whole monologue about how he never forgot Kitty Clip. And we never hear about her or Jane again. Right? So... Sorry, we do get a little wrap up on Jane. Bob Saget is dead now. <laughs> <laughs> That's sad ending to that. <laughs> but sorry, we do cut back long enough to Jane for Jane to open her note, her envelope. So stupid. Remember how he was an oil millionaire? Oil millionaire, very yeah, important. Yeah, you didn't think that was going to matter, did you? But. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there you go. The movie, it all comes together in the end because of all the great filmmaking. <laughs> He says, he leaves her a note, and he's left her a tip of $10,000. Go fuck yourself. Right, because he's a millionaire. You're a, an oil millionaire. Yes. $10,000. Nothing. Everybody's yeah, I, I would also take $10,000. I, I agree. <laughs> so, and then he, he's got to wrap it up, right? And this, the whole movie's like, hold on, hold on, wait. I got something profound to say. I don't know much, but I'm Dilly Bill. Sorry, no, I'm sorry. I'm going to read it to you verbatim. I'm Dilly Bill. And I'm not sure of much, but I'm sure of one thing. I love Kitty. And then the movie ends. It's like, you just did, you did, you wrote that on the thing. You can't do that twice. Yeah, it's Fuck like, you. It's like when a toddler gets everyone's attention at a birthday party. And you've got to be like, yeah, what is it? And they're like, I'm one time. And you're like, oh, motherfucker, shit. <laughs> boom. <laughs> said boom. Said boom. <laughs> wasn't me. I thought what you said was super interesting. So. <laughs> All right. But Sparkle that's... Donkey. The tequila for heckling your four-year-old nephew. <laughs> All right. It is that, though. Um, 
All right. Well, and that's it. We get credits. There's a little uh, there's a little blooper reel, but their bloopers are just as uninteresting as the rest of their fucking movies, so never mind. But we're not quite done with the uh, with the review yet. I want to ask you guys here at the end, because obviously this movie needs more exposure. We want this, this is, filmmaker this to make is, a lot of fucking movies. This is all the exposure right here. Right. This is all it's getting. That's unfortunately that is the tr- that is the case so far. But I think we can help. All right. So I'm gonna put you guys in charge of the marketing once more. What is the correct tagline for Dilly Loves Kitty? Okay. Uh, Dilly Loves Kitty. Never forget. Oh Jesus <laughs> Christ! Oh my God! So we're gonna. Because it was gonna, like watching yes, 9-11. Yes, no, it was. <laughs> and the Holocaust. Right, no, we started on Holocaust jokes. We're going to close on Full 9-11 circle. jokes. That's great. In it's, that, a guy from South Texas did it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. That was pretty good. Do you have a tagline for us, Eli? Uh, Dilly loves Kitty, whether she's conscious or not. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> All right, that actually is pretty good. Okay, so well, that's going to do it for our review of Dilly Loves Kitty. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to record the extra stuff before we fly home. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, Noah, we'll be returning to the world of Donald James Parker (laughs) in the first of his Best Friends trilogy, Best Friends Eternally. Oh, fuck, yes. All right. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 396 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks, and actually I guess this is not, this is the first thing, time I've thanked them, but uh, Maddie and Rose and Ben who have been doing an awesome job, and Nora who have done an awesome job at the theater helping take care of us today. Thank you so much. This is our second time in this theater. They took great care of us last time, took great care of us again today. Absolutely love it. Also, I want to give a big thanks to Tim Robertson, who does our social media, but also did uh, all the booking for this show uh, and for our venues for Platinum Night and everything. He did an amazing job, so thank you to Tim. Also, big thanks to Morgan, who is going to make this all sound like nobody ever made any jokes about incest as related to Sparkle Donkey Tequila. Don't worry. And murdering Charlie Kirk. And murdering Charlie Kirk, right? That'll also not make an end. He's an editor, not a time traveler. (laughs) (laughs) But of course, the biggest thanks to all of you for coming out. Thank you so much for making this such a success. We've had a ton of fun. Thank you. And until next week, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. I think it's time to euthanize God. (laughs) He had a good run. It's time. Rex went on to still hate his family. Is the formula we normally use here. <laughs> he thought to himself, let's murder God again. <laughs> there you go. There you or go. and Charlie Kirk. There you go. Kitty's death discouraged Dilly's romantic advances way less than all of us would hope. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Thank you, Seattle! Eli, I. I told you I could. Oh, Eli beat Heath first. Eli beat Heath. I wasn't to the I'm thing. Not in, I'm not in this one. You're, you're so playing. yeah, I'm already on the second one. <laughs> Technically, one I told that. you I could. I told you I could still stand up. <laughs> All right. So normally we don't do our interstitials and stuff live, uh, but we've decided because you are the best audience we've ever had that we would. You guys really are. Like, the, the speed with which you sold this show out is pretty fucking incredible. Thank you so much for that. Made me feel really, really good about myself before I fell off the fucking stage. And, and more importantly, Lucinda you made... laughed and laughed. Back me up, baby. You laughed for so fucking long. It was a lot. And then, I mean, to her credit, she then went to Walgreens and bought me bandages and shit like that, but then... But still laughing. laughing. Still laughing. Still laughing. I mean, she didn't stop the laughing. Wait, wait, wait. There's a stage to get on. 
There's a stage to get on. I'm a spry young man. I need to test my vertical leap at this moment right here. No, I'm not gonna... I would die. I like committing to the bit, but that's, you know, a much more permanent commitment. It's nice, though, because the people who would be at my funeral are already here. It's so. what we call a twofer. All right. All right. Now we've got an ad. Now we're special one. All right. <clears throat> I got to be an old man for this one. So, <laughs> all right. I'm here. I'm here. Try to jump on stage and fall off and hurt yourself. So <laughs> Boy, did I set you up for that one. All right. All right. Here we go. Heath was a tree in that one. I don't know if you guys can <laughs> Yes, move the evidence of your hate crime off stage. Thank you. All right, here we go. No, it's okay to do hate crimes against the Irish, apparently. It's... Eli assures me of this constantly. I got a much bigger cheer than I was hoping it would get. Jesus. The fuck Ooh, is wrong with hate crimes. people? <laughs> Eli was, Eli was just already there. He cheated. No, I'm... Yeah. You oh, totally I'm, fucking cheated. Yeah. I saw your cursor was there while I you were still scrolling. I can see your computer. Yeah, that's, that's After a... the 1940s. <laughs> really? <laughs> what? Yeah. You play that card every time. I, <laughs> I have 5,998,996 left. Allegedly. <laughs> Oh, the Irish oh, guy man. has some doubts about the Holocaust. Oh, God damn it, they're wireless. I've got nothing to pull. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> How was the live show? Well, I'll tell you, the breaks were strange. <laughs> I just appreciate you guys waiting to the break. <laughs> no, it's whispering. Morgan, cut this. Morgan, Morgan cut this. <laughs> People up in the booth, are, they're like, don't worry, man, we're me. Right <laughs> <You're dead, man." laughs> it's hard scrolling back up. I've got no str- I got no, uh, experience with that, right? There we go. Okay. That one I lost fair and square. Ah. All right. Ah. If you erase my notes, all I can talk about is zombies <laughs> is Philadelphia. That's all I've got. Just so you know, you get another 45 to 60 minutes of Philadelphia jokes because that's all I've got. <laughs> So, I don't want to wait. <laughs> it's not Philadelphia. That's not. I couldn't remember. Dawson's, Dawson's Creek. Creek. The streets of Philadelphia. No, no, no. <laughs> no. That is the song. I nailed it that time. Is it? No, no, no. All yes, right. thank you. Fine. That's the song. Well, the Philadelphia soundtrack. Yeah. This is. Okay. This is an important film, Heath. <laughs> Noah, when we came out for our live show, how much of the show did you think would be about <laughs> Philadelphia, <laughs> the Tom Hanks, Denzel Washington vehicle? How, how much of the parts that I end up cutting? Well, well quite, a, quite a bit, Just actually. Just for so. you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, shit, I'm going to scroll back up. You guys, bam, bam. Lou, 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 doing heat stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Spark of Donkey's my favorite stuff. <laughs> Lulu. Lu. Yeah, keep keep going, keep going. A little more. Heath described this tequila backstage as having a creme brulee quality. I did. It's delicious, actually. We've been shitting on it. <laughs> no, we have, wait, it's wait. Really we haven't been shitting on it. We've been locking it into the mind of the consumer. <laughs> In a very specific niche market that I don't know if they appreciate. If they didn't want us, they, they shouldn't know. Okay. I mean, anything. yeah, they did know what they were getting. They knew so. who they were then when they married us. <laughs> but it's sparkled. It's very creme brulee like. Yeah, no, it's delicious. I got awesome. the anejo right now. The what? The the anejo. No, it's the, not no. the thing. It's oh, not no, the I, thing from Philadelphia. No, it's it, kind of. <laughs> yeah, this is the reposado. So the uh, the rested aged tequila. It's good. Ooh. Well done. All right. Thanks for the vamp. <laughs> we you, like Eli. them. So. SparkleDonkey.com. Oh, think of the websites I'll make. I will fuck your SparklyDonkey.com. All right. Nobody steal that. I think you're safe. <laughs> I know my audience. 
One of you perverts is on Google Domains right now, aren't you? Do you need a minute? I, no, they beat okay. me to it. Yeah, it's probably too late now. My hands are All right. tied. Well, in that case, we better do a show. I'm up here doing, I'm up here doing japes. <laughs> too busy. Yep, no, I get it. I get it. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved.